Hello and welcome to today's class. So today we'll be dealing on isomerism. Isomerism. What then is isomerism? Isomerism is the existence or occurrence of two or more compounds with the same molecular formula but different structures. Let me repeat myself. Isomerism is the existence or occurrence of two or more compounds with the same molecular formula but different structures. Now let's look at the types of isomerism. There are two major types of isomerism. The first is called structural isomerism and the second is called stereo isomerism under structural under structural isomerism we have chain isomerism we have functional isomerism and then we have positional isomerism etc etc And then under stereoisomerism, we have geometric isomerism, and then we have optical isomerism. So now let's look at chain isomerism. Now, chain isomers have same molecular formula, the same functional group, but different arrangement of atoms in space. Let me repeat again. Chain isomers have the same molecular formula, the same functional group, but different arrangement of atoms in space. Now, let's take an example. We have C4H10. C4H10 originally is known as butane. And this is the structural formula. We have So if you look at this structure very well, we have four carbon atoms here and we have 10 hydrogen atoms. But then the chain isomer for butane is called 2-methylpropane. Now let's look at how it relates to butane. 2-methylpropane is C4H10. Now, the structural formula for this is 1, 2, 3. We have H. We have another H. We have the third H. We have the fourth H. We have the fifth H. We have the sixth. We have here CH3. And we have H. If you look at this structure very well, we have four carbon atoms in this structure. One, two, three, four. And then we have 10 hydrogen atoms in the structure. Now let's count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
So therefore, 2-methylpropane is the chain isomer for butane. Now let's look at functional isomer or functional isomerism. Functional isomer or isomerism occurs when two or more hydrocarbons have the same molecular formula but different functional group. Functional isomerism occurs when two or more hydrocarbons have the same molecular formula but different functional groups. So now let's take an example. We have here C2H6 and then O. Now, if you look at this compound, we have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen added to it. So let's draw the structure for this compound. We have C O C H. So we have here two carbon atoms. We have six hydrogen atoms and we have one oxygen atom. And this falls under a functional group known as eta. Why? Because there is an oxygen atom in the compound. So this structure is called methoxymethane. So the functional isomer for methoxymethane is known as ethanol. And ethanol falls under the functional group known as alcohol. And alcohol is made up of OH. So now let's draw the structure for ethanol. We have C and we have C. We have this. We have this. So this is the structure for ethanol. Now if you look at this structure and that of methane. one thing is similar. We have the presence of oxygen and we also have the presence of oxygen in methane. But then they are of different functional groups. Ethanol falls under the OH functional group known as alcohol. And then methane falls under the ethyl functional group. Now let's look at geometric isomerism. Geometric isomerism is the existence of two or more hydrocarbons with the same molecular formula but are not identical due to difference in the spatial arrangement of the component atoms. Let me repeat again. Geometric isomerism is the existence of two or more hydrocarbons with the same molecular formula but are not identical due to difference in the spatial arrangement of the component atoms. So under geometric is isomerism, we have cis and we have trans. Now let's take an example of both. So as we have something like this. Now, how do we name this structure? First of all, let's number from left to right and from right to left. So we have one, two, three, four. And we have one, two, three, four. Now, we have two substitute. And then let's identify the substituents. We have here hydrogen and we have here hydrogen. 
Now, if you look very well, the substituents are placed on the same radar or level. So it is called cis. Now, let's count the number of carbons in this structure. We have one, two, three, four. And four carbon is called boot. Now, if you look at the structure, we have double bond here, and double bond falls under the functional group known as alkene. Now, let's check for the correct placement numbering for the double bond. Counting from left to right, we have one, two, three. We have two and three. So, to name this structure correctly, we would choose the lesser number. So, we have cis boot 2 in now cis is as a result of the placement of the substituent boot is the number of carbons in the longest chain and then 2 is the lower numbering in relation to the double bond and then in is the functional group of the structure so it is called cis boot 2 in. Now let's take an example on trans. So we have Now let's number the structure. We have 1 2 3 4. And 4 carbon is called boot. If you look at the structure, we have double bond here. And double bond is called alkene. And then if you look at the structure again, we have two different substituents. We have hydrogen here and we have another hydrogen. But then the substituents are not on the same radar or level. We have the first substituent here and we have the second substituent here. So they are not on the same level. So since they are not on the same level, it is called trans. Now, let's look for the correct placement numbering for the double bond. We have 2 and 3, but then 2 is less than 3, so we go with 2. Now, let's name the structure. So, we have trans boot 2 in. So, the name of this structure is called trans boot 2 in.